Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer and one of the original developers of Windows at Microsoft. And I've got about a million Windows tips and tricks that I've accumulated over my 30 years of coding for it and working with it. Stupid Windows Tricks is a series I've put together to feature some of the best of the best. The stuff that I know now that I wish I'd known long ago. One of the things that pains me the most is when I watch someone using Windows and they really, truly, surely want to save a piece of information from the screen, but because maybe it's not simple text that they can just copy and paste, they just don't know how to grab it. And so now my wife expects me to remember a 12-digit FedEx tracking number over the phone because she can't remember the hotkey for the Windows snipping tool. I don't think so. And if I know my wife, and I think I do, I know exactly how she'd solve this hypothetical problem in real life. She'd pull out her phone and take a picture of the screen. And on the one hand, I mean, why not? It works. And you've now got a handy copy on your phone and your photos, but there's got to be a better way. And indeed, there is. In fact, there are three ways that you can snip, snag, or grab a part of the screen, a window, or the entire Windows desktop, or even a video thereof. Each is slightly more flexible and more powerful than the one before it, but just a tad more complicated as well. The first two that I'll show you are included with Windows, and the third, the one which allows you to make a recording of that area along with sound, video, even your webcam, is a third-party app. I'll show you all three approaches, and then you can decide which of the three best suits your needs. But please, learn at least one of them for me. The first and easiest way to grab a picture of the screen is with the print screen key on your keyboard. If you press print screen, a snapshot of the entire desktop, actually all of your monitors if you have more than one, is placed on the clipboard. If you want to edit or save that snapshot, you've then got to paste it somewhere like into Paint. Let's have a look at doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is to run calculator to give us something to take a picture of. Move that over to the side here and I'm going to press the print screen key and absolutely nothing will appear to happen. But if we now run Paint, we can go to Paint and I can paste and I should get an image from the desktop, which I do. I can zoom it in, zoom it out. And of course, I can crop it down to the one window if that's the area that I'm actually interested in by simply selecting that region and then picking crop. It may not be pixel perfect, but it's going to be close enough to stick in a PowerPoint. Recent versions of Windows have gone far beyond this, however, and they now include quite a powerful snipping tool built entirely into Windows. To access it, you have three options. The easiest way is to use its hotkey, which is Windows Shift S, which I remember as S as in snipping tool. Failing that, you can start it from the start menu using its name. But perhaps the handiest way to do it is to go into the keyboard's accessibility settings and to turn on the option that will automatically start the snipping tool as soon as you press print screen. You do lose that normal print screen behavior of copying the screen to the clipboard, but the snipping tool is capable of doing that and much more. Let's head back to the desktop to check it out. First thing I'll do is to run calc, so I have something to take a screenshot of, then I'll press the hotkey, which brings up a little menu up top. I can do a rectangular snip, a freeform, a window, or the entire full screen. I'm going to pick rectangular here, and then I'm going to just draw a box around it, and that should grab that region of the screen. You'll hear a chime, and then you'll see a little preview pop up. If you click on the preview, you'll be taken into the snipping editor, where you can use the tools to annotate, change, and edit the image that you've just captured. In the editor, you'll find tools to sketch up, so you can add arrows, little circles, you can use a highlighter, various editing tools, and then simply close out and it'll be saved in the history. Next, we'll try the freeform tool, which allows you to grab a capture of any shape. You simply draw it out and when you get back to overlap on your original circle, and as soon as you close your shape, you'll get the selection on the clipboard history. And just as with the rectangular selection, you can go in here and edit it to your heart's content. Next, I'm going to do the window capture, which will just automatically grab the window region extents, so I don't have to size it or crop it later. I just get a perfect copy of the window. Now I say perfect, but it's almost perfect. If you look on the very edges here, you'll see some bleed through from my horizon and skyline that were in the background bridge image. They show up on the edges as highlights on the edge. Now, I don't think Snagit suffers from this, and that's something we'll take a look at next. Now, your final option is to use a third-party commercial app like Snagit, which adds some very powerful functionality. Now, I'm going to rave about this software for a minute or two here, but don't be fooled into thinking this is some kind of sponsored video. It isn't. I'm just a long-time satisfied customer of Snagit with a referral link in the video description and nothing more. But it really is that good. Why? Well, for starters, I'm using it to create and record this video, like most of my others. The desktop segments are being entirely recorded by Snagit, and the software is robust enough that I was even able to record myself recording in Snagit by using two copies and a remote desktop instance. 
To record a live video of the desktop, or any window or rectangular region, I simply bring up its capture window. I make sure that the video is selected, and then I check my options. I want a preview, I want to capture the mouse cursor in the video, and I can choose whether it record the microphone or system audio or even the webcam. I don't have a webcam in this scenario, but if I did, you can stick your face down in the corner of the video that you're recording so that you can narrate it live. Once I click on Capture, I can select what area of the screen I want to record. If I mouse over the calculator window, you can see it suggests that app's window as the area to capture. And when I click on the calc window, it'll accept that selection and bring up the controls that allow me to start recording. As soon as I'm ready, I'll push the big red record button, and that is followed by a three second countdown before recording actually begins, so that you have a moment to get ready. Once the recording starts, I'll enter some numbers. 1, 2, 3, plus 4, 5, 6, for example. Then I'll mash the enter key a dozen times for dramatic flair, and when I'm done the recording, I'll click on the stop button. That takes me right into the Snagit editor with my new video all ready to go. I'll click play on it, resize the window a little bigger so we can see the playback better, and you'll notice that it's running at a full frame rate and that it has no obvious visible artifacts. In fact, I can record my entire 4K desktop at full resolution and it'll maintain the required 30 FPS, which I think is fairly impressive for a desktop capture program. It can also record a video of a video that's playing on the desktop, so it can be handy to grab a segment out of the middle of a longer video. Let's say I want to snag a region out of one of my own videos that I've already uploaded. I simply bring up the capture window and then I make sure that record system audio option is turned on so that I get the audio track as well. Next, I click on the capture button and select the region of the window that I wish to record. Now, I don't want to contend with the playback bar at the bottom, so I just exclude that region and when I'm done, I jump up and click record on the controls. That starts the countdown and once the recording is rolling, I click play on the actual YouTube video. I'll let the recording run for a few seconds and then press stop, at which point the resultant video pops up in the video editor. I'll close the YouTube session out and then I'll use the built-in editor to trim the start and end of the video. Because it's always easier to record a little extra padding than to trim it out precisely to where you want it, I think. Trimming the video out is really simple. You just put the playback head where you want to place your cut, drag the side you want to cut, and then pick cut. Go to the other end, put it where I want it, drag the far side out, and I'll pick cut again, and that will trim the video from both ends. And with that, we've got the little clip from my video that I wanted to save away. One ability of Snagit that I find super handy is the ability to capture text out of an image. For example, let's say that I have Task Manager up and running. How do you start Task Manager these days? Right click on the Start button and then Task Manager. There we go. Let's go to the Performance page. Let's say I want to grab this text and I want it as text so I can paste it into Word, not as a picture of text, but as actual text. Because right now, it's just a picture. There's nothing we can do with it. But if I capture it with Snagit, I'll draw a box around it. It'll pop up in the editor as soon as I click on the capture. And I can just say edit, grab text. And it will grab the actual text that I can now do anything I want with out of the image. Very handy. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, please check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with how to live a successful life on the spectrum. If you found today's episode to be any combination of helpful or entertaining, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. After all, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so why not leave me one of each before you go today? And if you turn on the bell icon, you'll get notified of other upcoming segments of Stupid Windows Tricks and other episodes on the channel. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you, and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.